So you are a material scientist and this is an online festival which basically bridges technology and the economy. So what is the role of chemistry in all of this? The role of chemistry uh, is everywhere. Chemistry is everywhere by, uh, in our daily life. We, you need chemistry to get uh, uh, electronics, you need chemistry in uh, automotive, you need chemistry in aeronautics, uh, in uh, home and personal care, everywhere. And when we are dealing with circular economy, I'm, think, I'm convinced that uh, chemistry is the enabler as this is the science and the technology that will allow you to make the global recycling and to make the global circle of circular economy. Because through chemistry, you can recycle metals, you can depolymerize polymers, you can reintroduce them in the global chain using some other chemical uh, reactions. And, and so chemistry is really everywhere in the, in the circle. Okay, so first example that we're going to put up. The first example is uh, what's so-called MyH2O2, is a, is a way to put, on the, as you see on the, on the slide, uh, we are a big worldwide supplier of uh, hydrogen peroxide that goes in several industries, and particularly in the paper pulp industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we have been able to, de to develop in the recent years is to put the so-called satellite peroxide production on the site of the pulp makers. So what you see here is the plant where you see with the arrow uh, the, the, the place where we do H2O2 that will go into the global uh, circle of the plant by recycling the system. Then we go to the next slide and it's done in, in it's shown in a, in a rather simple way but uh, you can see exactly what is happening. Well, we sell uh, H2O2 to the pulp manufacturers uh, and uh, uh, from the uh, preparation of the pulp, you get oxygen and hydrogen. And through the, our chemical process, we recycle the H2O2 that goes back in the circle of the pulp making. And this is a global, a new, what, circular global business model that avoids logistics, of course, that is one of the main impact, and that puts all the chemicals back in the loop uh, on the continuous process by using, of course, uh, uh, our technology to uh, recycle H2O2. So there, there's no waste leaving the factory? No. In fact, the waste uh, effluents are only are, are treated globally, but the waste is uh, recycled all, all, the, all, the, all the circle. So around. also in the treatment, there's nothing that yeah. leaks out of yeah. that? Yeah, exactly. To make chemistry come to life a bit more, uh, we created a random product selector, which will select some random products for us to discuss. And then the question to you is very simple. How can chemistry help to make this product fit for a circular economy? Are you ready? Ready. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to spin the wheel now for mm -hmm. the first product. A smartphone. Smartphone. Okay, so first question that I have on the smartphone, because I did a bit of research. Is it true that there are 62 different materials, metals, in each smartphone? Do you know? There may be 61 or 63, <laughs> but I'm sure there is a lot of metals in a smartphone because you have a lot of precious metals. They, they go for mainly for the electronic properties. You have a lot of precious metals. Uh, you have gold, platinum, palladium. You have rare earths. You have aluminum. You have what uh, are rare uh, earths? copper. Rare earths are uh, uh, so-called also lanthanides. There are some specific elements that are quite unknown by the by the people, but which are very active in electronics. They are also active in catalysis. They are also active in magnetism, and they go uh, a lot in these kind of systems because they are very specific optoelectronic properties like conductivity, uh, emissivity, and, uh, and solvents making these kind of rarers. That's why I, I'm speaking about that. Uh, so they go a lot into the, the, the smartphone. So uh, yes, I'm sure that there is around 60 metals in, the, in a smartphone. But there is also a lot of different polymers. Uh, and, uh, and a smartphone is a very complex system that couldn't exist without chemistry. Because again, chemistry brings the polymers, brings the precious metals, brings the electronics, brings the glass, the, surf the, the, the modification of the glass surface, and so on. Then, 
when we want to recycle a, a smartphone, again, chemistry can be the enabler because in terms of precious metals, you can recover the metals and chemistry will be able to separate the metals from each other by techno technology that had been applied, for example, to the separation of rare earths, but that can apply to the separation and recovery of precious metals or any kind of other metal with a purity which is very high. We can go to up to 99.99% to .99 of purity through the chemical methods of uh, hydrometallurgy, through uh, uh, solvents, through dispersants, through extractants. And so chemistry will be very key in the recovery of metals. But again, I mentioned polymers because we, are, we supply a lot of polymers. The chemistry uh, is really uh, key in that. And the chemistry will be key in the recycling of the polymers from the smartphones. So how does it work? Because I did see an example once of that you had like this um, motherboard or that printed circuit board. Yeah. You put that in like yes. some sort of a liquid and then right. things start to bubble up and start exactly. to split. Yes, at some time, you have to dismantle the, the system. Then, of course, you have to separate the polymers or the resins from the, from the metals. So, again, back to uh, solvents, to uh, acids, or what, some chemical treatments. Then you can separate the part of the, which is uh, the resin that goes back to the, well, we can go back to the basic molecules. And then you have the mixture of the metals, and then you have several possibilities that we use in mining, for example, that you can use in these kind of uh, uh, schemes to uh, uh, re-separate and to purify the metals one from each other. So don't you have like, you know, you need to basically add chemicals to recycle them chem chemically. Don't you have a yeah. lot of waste? But you can, you can recycle the chemicals from the waste also. So that can be also a very virtuous circle because in this case, you will be able to recycle the chemicals and to reuse them. Uh, so it's a, again a complete circle where the chemicals can be used to uh, separate the resins from the, from the metals that can be used to, to purify the metals, but then can be recycled by again other chemical treatments to re-put them in the, in the global chain. But don't you think that it, it might be more effective to, you know, for example, with a phone, they often reach their end of life because the battery, you know, dies or is not performing well yeah. enough. Do you think there is a role for designers to, you know, enable the the product lifespan to to well, be extended? Well, the, the the problem is not the yes, uh, it's global. Uh, we didn't disclose the battery. That's true. The battery is in the phone, but battery can be recyclable as well. So the point is that if you can change the battery in a phone, you can, the, 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 the main pieces of the phone are working very well. So you have just to change the battery, but the battery can be completely recyclable. So you think that if everything is designed to be yeah. chemically recycled, that it doesn't matter how long the lifespan is? I'm sure, I'm sure that we can design the global systems, and it applies for, for, for a phone, but that can apply for other systems, in, in the scope that they can be recyclable. But that's, again, that's a, a, a different way of thinking, a the, 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 the different way of behaving, mm -hmm. and that's a, a different way of making the things so that they can go into the global and virtuous circular economy. Right? Spin the wheel again. Ah. Airbag. That's good. Yeah, you you have an example for yes, an airbag, right? we have a right? very good example. We have been developing uh, uh, the the project called Move for Earth, which is exactly recycling polyamide from airbags. In in a nutshell, an airbag is made from polyamide 66 and uh, and silicone, uh, and uh, once we, it's used, uh, you can recycle the polyamide by a chemical treatment, chemical and physical treatment, to separate the silicon from the polyamide. And then, by a chemical and mechanical treatment, we can recycle the polyamide to make uh, it back in technical polymers. Uh, in this case, we don't recycle, the, most of the time, we don't recycle the polyamide for new airbags, but we recycle to technical polymers that go, for example, in, in parts for cars. Uh, uh, and uh, but the polyamide is completely recycled. So you have two main 
chemicals yeah. in airbags. Yeah. And you started to recycle that at the end of the life of the airbag. Why an airbag yeah. and why these two materials? Ah, ah because, well, the, these two materials is, is really based on the, 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 you need to have these two materials to make the airbag, uh, which you know is kind of a yeah. balloon to make it work but, and to make it uh, withstand on the pressure and so on. So this is the technology as, as needed that. But then we realized that there is a lot of uh, uh, potential for the recycling of airbags that come from the global economy of the recycling of the car. And so there was a huge amount of potential polyamide to recycle. So that's how that's why we started this project more than 10 years ago. And because it's really a, an interesting feedstock for polyamide. So you say that with the polyamide, one of the chemicals that you restore after yeah. it, um, you, you can restore it but only for other applications, not in to this, bring back to the airbag. Well, in this case, the global economy was more to go to technical parts mm -hmm. because it was easier to make it, uh, to, 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 to reuse the, the polyamide into technical parts, is this that, kind of technical polymers. Is it downcycling? Is it, is it really an example of that the quality of yeah, the no, material goes down? No, the quality is the same. It's still the, the same PI66. And it's just applied to other, uh, because we, the, the, the way to recycle leads to small pellets. And these pellets are really easy to put, to put in, the, in the polymerization of, and, and to, to make in the extruders, for example, and to make technical parts. Okay. So it's a global interest of the, of the, of the system. So um, how, how is that loop closed? Do you, like, Obviously, when you have an accident with your car, mm -hmm. um, you need to go to a garage. Yeah. Do they bring that back to the manufacturer? Like, how, how does the system around it work? Well, there is a complete system that collects the, 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 the airbags from the car manufacturer, well, the car uh, dismantlers. And so uh, the point was to organize this global system that we can collect. I hope you have. Uh, uh, the, the least uh, accidents with your cars, <laughs> of course, but uh, it also comes from used cars, and so there is a global system of collecting. We just had a very interesting question that came in from yeah. Pauline, um, and she talks about that there have been diff sessions that are really clearly talking about how we learn from nature yeah. to make a system work, and especially yes. when you look at nutrients, right? Mm. If we look at one of these showcases that we just had. Um, how how can we learn from nature to uh, close the loop? A look? lot, a yeah. lot. In chemistry, chemistry uh, learns a lot from nature, and and will learn a lot. The problem is not to completely mimic the nature, but is to get inspired. And for example, uh, by uh, photosynthesis is something that uh, will uh, is inspiring chemistry in terms of how to reproduce it. The problem for photosynthesis is very slow, so we need to try to find chemical processes that can be accelerated by uh, some energy at the time. It's nothing easy. There is no free lunch. <laughs> but uh, we are really looking at uh, these kind of things. We are looking at uh, uh, the, 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 some of the um, specificities that nature gives to plants, to animals to understand how it works. For example, the so-called lotus leaf, the superhydrophobicity that you get on some leaves. And we try to reproduce that by either bio-based chemicals or traditional chemicals and physics, because in the end you realize that not only it's the chemical composition, but also the nature of the surface that brings the property. So uh, we can work on surface modification, we can work on mechanical properties, you need that some shells have very, very strong uh, mechanical properties. So we understand, we try to understand what is the structure to be able to reproduce these kind of things by the, the, the chemical, the chemistry. So we are more and more going into what's so-called uh, bio-inspired materials. Again, we, the idea is really not to mimic and to do exactly the same because nature has, again, longer uh, time scale but it's really to understand, to analyze exactly what the nature has been doing and to reproduce by chemical processes. So definitely, yes, the chemistry is getting more and more. The chemistry and the physics need to be more and more inspired by nature. The point is, uh, uh, when I would talk about IP or, or, or 
or the way we work is we work on a more and more open and collaborative way. We work with uh, academia uh, and we need to get knowledge from academia. We work with customers. Uh, we need to get the challenges of our customers to anticipate and to make them to, to bring them value through the solutions we bring with our, with our products and we need to work with sometimes partners with our startups uh, uh, even our competitors sometimes we are joint projects so the model is more uh, global and we need to understand also the needs of the citizens of yourself and myself when we are in a citizen so the model is coming more and more open more and more collaborative and we are more working with agreements and shared IP or, uh, or uh, shared value, as long as we create more. So today, I don't see a real move on that. And on the contrary, we need to reinforce the, 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 our IP, our protection, or uh, uh, what we, what, from what we get. Uh, but we probably need to do it in a more open way through these kind of collaborations, and particularly, of course, with our customers.